This is Geometry Unit 1, Lesson 5, More of Quadratic Equations. When we're dealing with quadratic equations, there are some that can't be solved by factoring. For example, the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x minus 3 is equal to 0 can't be solved by factoring. So it does not have rational solutions. It doesn't come out to be a whole number or a fraction or a decimal. But however, it does have irrational solutions. Irrational solutions means the answer is going to have a square root in it, probably. So, when you work with these problems, they can be solved using the quadratic formula. We learned that back in Algebra 1, so it's been a while. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now remember, that comes from having the quadratic equation in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. This formula cannot be used until this equation, your equation's in this form. Now, the signs also go with the coefficients. When you have, for example, x squared minus 6x minus 3, a is 1, b is negative 6, c is negative 3. And there will always be two solutions. You'll have a something plus a square root and something minus a square root when you work with that. Now, every quadratic equation can be solved using the quadratic formula. So, if you can factor, factor, but if you're really stuck, use the quadratic formula. Every, it'll work on every single quadratic, whether it's factorable or not. So, let's try using the quadratic formula. We have x squared minus 6x minus 3 equals 0. Now, we already said that that's not factorable because the factors of 3 can't add up to 6. It doesn't work. However, we can use the quadratic formula to solve this. Now, first thing we have to do is make sure it's in standard form. x squared, 6x, constant value equals 0, descending values, highest exponent first. So we have that set up in the correct way. All right, now I like to write my a, b's and c's out inside so I have them. My a value is the coefficient on the x squared, which is 1. b value is the coefficient on the middle term, so that's going to be negative 6. Don't forget your sign. And your c value is going to be negative 3. So there are your values. All you have to do is plug them into the formula that's up above. x equals, because remember these are always going to be x values when you're done, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so negative b will be the negative of negative 6, which will be positive 6 eventually, plus or minus b squared, negative 6 squared, be careful if you're using your calculator to do that because make sure it's in parentheses because it won't square the negative otherwise. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 3 all over 2 times 1. So filling in all of those values that we have, we have x equals negative negative 6 is just 6 plus or minus. The square root of negative 6 squared is 36. Watch your signs here. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 3 is positive 12, all over 2. Simplifying a little more, 6 plus or minus, the square root of 36 plus 12 is 48, all over 2. Now, we need to simplify our radical. 48 has a perfect square in it. We want simplest radical form. Remember, 48 is 16 times 3. Uh, 16 is a perfect, the biggest perfect square that goes into 48. So it's plus or minus 16 times 3 all over 2. So square root of 16 is 4, square root of 3, all over 2. And to simplify this, what we want to do is divide both terms by 2. So this is going to be x is equal to 6 over 2 plus or minus. 4 radical 3 over 2. And that simplifies to be x equals 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. Now remember, there are actually two answers here. This is 3 plus 2 radical 3 and it is also x equals 3 minus 2 radical 3. Those are the exact answers. Now, if you wanted to, if you were asked for a decimal approximation, what you would have to do is plug those in your calculator. So let me put my calculator up here. If I was going to do 3 plus 2 times the square root of 3, 3 plus
plus 2 times the square root of 3 and press enter and this is your decimal approximation so 3 plus 2 square root of 3 is approximately 6.464 depending on where you want to round it off so the decimal approximations would be 6.464 approximately say I rounded off to the thousandth and to save yourself some time if you want to redo this just change this to a minus just arrow up press enter and then arrow back and change plus to a minus and press enter and then you have negative 0.464 is your other value so these are the approximations and this is the exact value unless you are asked for an approximation leave it in radical form and simplest radical form if you can all right, let's try the other problem. 3x squared equals 6x plus 2. First thing we have to do is get the equation in standard form. So we want it descending order, highest exponent first, equal to 0. So we want to move the 6x plus 2 over to the other side. I like to keep my x squareds positive, so I'm, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to minus the 6x, and I'm going to minus the 2, and put them on this side, and put them in order. So that's going to be 3x squared minus 6x minus 2 is equal to 0. So, what are my a, b, and c values? Well, a is equal to 3, that's the coefficient on the x squared, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to negative 2. So, there are my values. So, all I have to do is plug it in the formula. All right, again, x equals negative b. Well, I'm going to do this in my head. Negative negative 6 is just 6, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4, times 3 times negative 2, because it's a times c, all over 2 times 3. So solving this, 6 plus or minus the square root of 36, negative 4 times 3 times negative 2 is positive 24, all over 6. So 36 plus 24 gives me 60 all over 6. Now I need to simplify 60. What perfect square goes into 60? Well, let's see, 4 times 15 I believe is 60. So that's going to give me 2 times the square root of 15. So x is equal to 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 15 all over 6. Now I want to split this up into separate terms because I want to divide each one of these by 6. It's going to be 6 over 6 plus or minus 2 radical 15 over 6 or 2 square root of 15 over 6. Now notice I can reduce this. 6 over 6 is equal to 1 plus or minus. Now what does the 6 divide? Well 6 is a rational number, part of a rational number. It's not a square root so it can only divide the 2 here. So 2 over 6 reduces actually to be 1 3rd radical 15. You can't divide the 6 and the 15 by 3 and reduce those. You can only reduce radical to radical, coefficient to coefficient. So your answer is 1 plus or minus 1 third radical 15. Now again, if you want to do the decimal approximations, you can. All you have to do is get out your calculator and you put in exactly what's there. 1 plus, I'm going to use my alpha key to make the fraction, Pick number one, and I have one third radical 15, so one arrow down to the three, and then forward arrow to get off the fraction, and then put in the square root, second and the x squared key, 15, and forward arrow, and that is the exact value. To get the decimal value, just press enter, and this is approximately 2.291, approximately, depending on where I want to round it. And again, if I want to do this uh, minus, all I have to do is arrow up instead of having to retype it, press enter, and then arrow back, and change the plus to a minus, and it saves you some steps. And press enter, and there's your decimal approximation, which I did about four times. But you get the idea. So, if you're asked for the exact value, leave it in radical form. If you're asked for a decimal approximation, then you want to leave it as is. Now remember this is also two answers. 
1 plus 1 third radical 15 and 1 minus 1 third radical 15. So that is the quadratic formula. It should be familiar to you. You should have it memorized. Um, if you don't, it is on the Regents reference sheet that you will have at the Regents exam. I'll probably end up giving you a copy before long.